From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all times, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Tarzan and the Manuema. Once again, the moon was full. And still the rains had not come. In the Shamba, near the village, the half-formed ears of the kaffir corn had dried up. The plantains were like hard stones, and the cassava roots were dust that would yield no meal for bread. The men and women of the Punya tribe had grown gaunt, and the children cried because of the pangs of emptiness that racked their small bodies. <laughs> hush, Togo, hush. Togo, hungry. The Gama knows her Belu is hungry. Her heart weeps, but there is nothing to do. If, if Dogo's friend Tarzan were here, he could do something. Nagama is afraid that even Tarzan could do nothing. What's that? The people of the village, they are filled with excitement. Perhaps Cassandra of Witch Doctor has found rain. It will take more than a divining rod this time. Nagama, she better open door and see what people... They come this way, Togo. Why should people of the village come to us? Why, it's... It's Tarzan. Uh, uh, Tarzan! Jumbo, Nagama. Jumbo. Togo, he is all right? Togo, right behind me. Hello, Tarzan. I will speak with you later, people of Punya. Let us go inside. Oh, you are thin, my small friend. There has been little to eat. Oh, but now, now the rains will come. Togo told Nagama that Tarzan could bring rain. <laughs> oh, no, no. No, I'm afraid I can't do that. Oh, but, but Togo told Nagama that Tarzan could. I, uh, I plan to do the next best thing, though. I'm going to take the people of Cunha to the rains. I've brought some meat and as many water bags as I could manage... But tomorrow, your tribe must begin a long trek to the mountain country. The trip be hard for a people weak from lack of food and drink. Well, I, I plan to make it easier. I'm going ahead and blaze a trail. I'll try to have some meat and some water at each night's resting spot. Do I... do I smell food now? The women are preparing what I brought. You'd better get out there, Torgo. I want to see you looking fatter than when next time we meet. Oh, don't, don't leave Torgo, Tarzan. Take Torgo with you. You want to come with me as I blaze the trail and hunt for food? I would have as far to travel if I come with the tribe. <laughs> Your small head is always ready with answers, isn't it? Oh, say that Togo can go with you. Oh, what does Nagama say? Nagama never worries about her Belu when he is with Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. All right, Togo. You can come with me then. Tomorrow we will lead the people of Punya to the mountain country of Kenyara, where there is bound to be much rain. <laughs> But for once, Tarzan was wrong. The people who lived at the foot of Kenyara, the great slumbering volcano of the north, were as hungry as those of Punya. A cannibal tribe, the Manuema's garishly painted faces shone in the firelight as they talked over the problem. The grisly souvenirs of their victims, which they wore as decorations about their necks, tossed in rhythm with their swaying bodies, and their teeth, filed to sharp points, gleamed wickedly as they faced their discredited witch doctor. Witch doctors, you loki, no good. Aye, aye. Fruit dries up. Animals, leave Kanyala. Cattle grow sick. Aye, aye. Our people grow weak and die. Aye, aye. Kanyala is angry. The great volcano frowns upon the people of Manuema. Aye, aye. Manuemas need new witch doctor, more powerful Yurogi. Aye, aye. I say, make sacrifice of all witch doctor to volcano. Aye, aye. No, no, hear me, people of Manuema. Speak, witch doctor. What you say is true. 
The fruit has dried on the vine. The rain refuses to come to our country, and our people grow weak. It is true also that this is because Kenyara, the greatest of all volcanoes of the Congo, is angry. But only I, Yorogi of Manuema, can tell you why Kenyara is angry. Then tell us! Kenyara is angry because many moons have passed since we have made human sacrifice. You will be human sacrifice. <laughs> Only I know what Kenyara demands. He tells me he does not want me nor any member of Manuema tribe. But no strangers come to our country now. Soon they will come again. In the lowlands, it is even drier than it is beneath the shadow of Kenyara. Our men must go forth and select from the strangers... A small boy to sacrifice to the god of the volcano. Aye, aye. And we must also capture a grown man from those who come to our country. The biggest and strongest man we can find. From his flesh and from his blood will the people of Manueva grow strong once again. Aye, 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 aye. We shall return with our story in just a moment. Even as the cannibalistic savages of Manuema started out to find a young boy to sacrifice to the slumbering god of the volcano and to find a strong man to appease their own inhuman superstitions and appetites, Tarzan and the small Torgo plunged deeper and deeper into the jungle thicket. Behind them, they left a blazed trail for the people of Punya. Well, I think this is as far as we can go today, Togo. How long it take tribe to get here? They ought to reach this point by tomorrow. I only wish I could find a little water hole near here, like the one I found for them yesterday. They ought to be there by now. Oh, they must be much happy when they see there you kill for them and great water hole you find. Oh, well, not much water in it, but enough so they won't die of thirst, I guess. Are you tired, Togo? Uh, oh, no. Togo, not tired a bit. Oh, you're yawning. <laughs> Aren't you ready to go to sleep for the night? Uh, Tarzan. Yes? Tonight, couldn't we build a place to sleep on the ground somewhere? Oh, we haven't time to build anything. And it certainly isn't safe to sleep on the ground without protection, not with the temper of the stray animals who are left around here. But I... I, I get afraid up in the trees. I think you're a little homesick for Nagama. No, no, that is not the reason. Well, maybe not. I think I'll take you back so that you can sleep in your mother's tent tonight. Oh, but Nagama and the rest of the tribe are day behind us. A well, day by the ground trail we travel, but only a short time by the upper level. Oh, but when Tarzan swings from tree to tree and from vine to vine, he has to carry Togo on his back like a tiny Belu. <laughs> Being carried on my back doesn't make you a Belu. I often travel on the back of Tantor, the elephant. That doesn't make Tarzan a Belu. Well, that is different. Not a bit. Nowhere is there anyone who's so great or so strong that he needs no help from another. Come on, Toko. Come on, climb up. We'll see if we can find Mama Nagama. And so, with Torgo's small arms clutched about his neck, Tarzan swung noiselessly through the upper level of tangled jungle growth like the great apes who had raised him from childhood. The members of the Punya tribe were retiring early in preparation for the next day's march, and the camp seemed almost deserted when Tarzan and Torgo dropped from the sky. Ah! 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 You frightened me! I'm sorry, Sui. We didn't mean to. But Sui always frightened by everything. Not brave like Torgo. Oh, Sui's all right. <laughs> Sui, where is Hima of Nagama? There. Santa, come on, Torgo, let's find your mother. <laughs> why, why do you always laugh like Tango the hyena? <laughs> Nagama said he's behind rocks, but Nagama not in tent. <laughs> Sui, will you stop giggling for a minute and tell me where Nagama is? <laughs> when we get to water hole Tarzan makes, Himla, the crocodile, is guarding it. Men are tired and weak, so they say we do without water another day. But Nagama say must have water if he is to live to see Togo again. So she go to the water hole. <laughs> she not come back. 
Wait here, Togo. No, no, I come. I see Mama Nagama. Tarzan and Torgo ran through the forest until they reached a looming palisade of sandstone, below which lay the once abundant watering place. Now in its fetid heart lay a great crocodile, and beyond the savage reptile was Nagama, cut off from retreat on one side by the great walls of stone, on the other by the hideous monster. Quiet, Torgo. Gimla's watching her. If she starts towards you, Gimla may attack. Me quiet. We creep up silently. Don't step on any twigs. No, I'm in a position to shoot. If only my arrow can pierce that tough hide. Well. Tarzan! Tarzan, Togo! Mama Nagama, we save you. Oh, no, Nagama, don't move. It's only wounded. It's coming at you. The wounded reptile slithered rapidly toward the nearest human, Nagama. But faster still moved Tarzan. He dived at the animal, his great hunter's knife gleaming in the moonlight. The enormous trap-like mouth opened, the jagged teeth beckoned. But as Tarzan landed on the scaly creature, he wrenched it over on its back with almost superhuman strength. The knife rose, and then it flashed down into the vulnerable, pale belly. The animal's great tail flayed the air with maniacal fury. The knife plunged again and again, and at last the frantic lashing of the beast stopped. Tarzan put one foot on the dead crocodile, and then he raised his voice in victory. Mama Nagama, you are all right. I am all right, my son. I have brought Torgo to spend the night with you. He, uh, he doesn't care for sleeping in the treetops. The dangers here are far greater. Every living thing fights for the drop of water and the morsel of food that are left. Please, Tarzan, keep Torgo with you. He is safe now, only with you. <laughs> Oh, this house in the trees, nice, Tarzan. Well, it's not much protection, but it was all I could build in a couple of hours. Well, last night, before we went back to Nagama, Tarzan said he has no time to build house. I didn't have time today, but I can't leave you alone with no protection. Oh, uh, alone? Yes. While you sleep tonight, I shall have to hunt. The game grows scarcer, and there is next to nothing here for your people when they arrive. They, they come soon? They should be here by tomorrow night. I thought by the time we reached the Kenyara country, we would have found many animals and fresh springs. Where will we go next? I don't know. All I do know is that I'll have to comb the jungle tonight and find some food and water. You won't be afraid alone, will you? No. O only it would be easier if Tarzan brought rain. <laughs> you still think I'm capable of anything, don't you? <laughs> well, go to sleep. Who knows what tomorrow may bring? Sleep well, my small, brave warrior. Tree house. Far up. Hard climb. But we are here now. Look. The boy sleeps. And he is alone. Nadi. He's a fine-looking youth. Kenyara will be pleased. He will then send us a strong man to nourish our blood. And after that, he will send the rains. And the Manuema will be powerful once again. Enough of talk. And Charlie, another scrap boy, you place hand over his mouth. He must not cry out. Ready now? Aye. Undaka! Charlie! <laughs> Limba Kosa Como, Kulala Toto Kenyara, Great Kenyara, we offer small boy to appease your wrath. Limba Kosa Koma, his body has been anointed with rich oil. He is great sacrifice. Stand still, small boy. 
You spoil ceremony. It's so good not then still. You kill me, maybe, but all of you die too. Tarzan come and kill every one of you. Tarzan big and strong. He take all of you at once and, and kill you with his bare hands. Fast, fast. Who is this Tarzan? Oh, he is Togo's friend. Even now he hunts in the treehouse for Togo. He is big and strong, huh? Oh, twice as high as any of you. And stronger than Sheeta the panther. He is white god. Ah, then the sacrifice to Kenyara will not yet be made. We will wait until this white god comes to seek his young friend. <laughs> then we will have sacrifice for Kenyara. And also sacrifice for hungry warriors of Manuema. <laughs> <laughs> In just a moment, we'll continue with Tarzan and the Manuema. The council fire of the Manuemas burned bright as the barbaric paint-smeared cannibals danced about their small prisoner, whom they had gagged and bound to a stake. And high in a tree, just beyond the circle of flickering firelight, a great bronzed figure stood poised. Suddenly, a spiral of woven rope flashed downward over the head of a twirling dancer. In the half-light, the rope was invisible, and all that the other natives could see was the fearful sight of one of their number being hurtled upward through space. Oh, 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 did you see that? Angara, he, he, he disappeared into heaven. It is some sorcery we do not understand. Angara, behind me. I look round, he is, he flies in air. It is Angela. He's been thrown back from the heavens. Oh. He's naked. He's broken. He's dead. And only a slender line on his throat. Our enemy has strong Yorogi. Ah! Who? Can't you? He taken from us now. He too is thrown to heaven. Speak, enemy. Tell us thy wish. I am the god of Kenyala. Oh, the voice of the volcano. Our master. Unless you release the small boy, I shall kill your people. One at a time. You hear that, witch doctor? Can you ever kill us? One at a time. Let the boy go. Where is the body of another of your tribe? It is Kanshu. First Anjala, then Kanshu. We all be killed. Me and thy boy. Now wait, this may be some trick. We not know that you are god of the volcano. Give us some sign. Unless you do, we hold the boy. The sign will be shown tomorrow night when the moon rises beyond Kenyara. A sign so great it will leave no doubt. But if there is one mark of violence on the boy, every man of Manuema shall die. A dozen feet away from the encampment, Tarzan dropped the hollow log he'd been using as an improvised megaphone. And then he swung to the upper level and hurried to meet the Punya tribe that was slowly approaching the Kenyara country. As dawn crept through the jungle, he dropped to the ground near the weary caravan, and he was soon facing Nagama, making the most difficult speech of his life. My poor Bailu. At first I wanted to burst into the camp and kill as many of them as I could. But there were hundreds of them, and I knew Togo would be killed before I could reach him. He was bound and gagged. But you think they will not harm him until you return? I'm sure they have accepted my voice as that of their god. But I have to perform something more sensational than I did last night if I'm to have a chance of saving him. What can you do? Well, I have a plan. But first, I must ask you a question. Yes. Has anyone here felt any rumblings beneath their feet? Rumblings? A very slight vibration of the ground. Perhaps the beginnings of a tremor. No. But none of us had the acute senses of torsion. Well, if you felt nothing, then perhaps the Manuemas haven't either. Where is Sui? What can that silly girl do? I have to see her. Please, Nagama, find her for me, will you? It's really important. <laughs> hey, you, what do you think Sui does then? Yes, yeah, Sui. Sui, do you remember those bullets you stole from the camp of the white men when they came to the Punya country? <laughs> 
Oh, now, Sue, this is important. Torgo's life depends on it. What did you do with those bullets? <laughs> Sue knows not what bullets are. <laughs> oh, Sue, will you stop giggling? Look at me. I like to look at dolls, Anna. <laughs> he has handsome face, huh? Look, bullets are the small, hard arrows that come from the Tamangani's thunder sticks. Remember? I found you with them. And, and I told you, you must throw them away. <laughs> if Tarzan told Sue to throw them away, then Sue threw them away. You did not. I saw them later around your neck. You'd made a necklace of them. Where are they now? <laughs> Sue has necklace hidden behind Paul's skirt. <laughs> White man's bullets. And to think that this curse of the jungle may yet save the life of Torgo. It is... Oh, it is nearly dark now, Tarzan. We are almost to the top. Almost to the top of the mighty Kenyara. And I still haven't seen any suspicious-looking fissure in the rock. Fissure? Yes, a, a cleft, a narrow opening, a crack. Over there, but that hard crust of lava, is that a fissure? Yes, Nagama, that is. Come. Yes, this spot might work. Wait until I put my ear to it. Ah, this is it. My boy will be saved. We can only pray. You have the gunpowder we emptied from the bullets? Neither. And the fuse of dried weeds I made? Neither. And you can see the camp of the Manuema from here? The camp and the ceremonial fire. Targo is near the fire. Yes. You will watch that fire, Nagama. And if you see it flare up suddenly, it will be from the powder I throw on it. That will be a signal for you to light the fuse and then run for your life. I understand. You... you know that you may not escape. Many times in jungle, mother risked life for child. <laughs> By the time Tarzan had reached the base of Kenyara, the moon had risen. He stood at the edge of the village. His face was painted with garish colors that outdid the Manuemas, and his body was smeared with a phosphorescent substance. His mighty figure, luminous in the sable night, looked for all the world like that of some strange jungle god as he walked boldly into the camp and approached the fire. Who approaches the fire of the Manuemas? I am the god of Kenyara. You are a false god. I fear not your anger. My anger is mighty. Unless you do as I say, I shall destroy all of you. And your village as well. Ah! No, mighty witch doctor. Do not anger him. He is the god of the volcano. His body gleams like the moonlight. Last night, his voice came like thunder. And he killed two of our men. He killed them by a rope. I found it this morning. And his voice thundered through a hollow log I also found. He is a faker. Capture him, men of Manuema. Wait! I give you one more chance. Unless you untie the boy, I shall produce the sign I promised you last night. And it shall mean death. Take him. The boy dies. And so does this defiler of a god. Stop! Put no hand on me. You see this bit of powder? Aye. Aye. I toss it into the ceremonial fire. So, that is the sign of Kenyatta. It means nothing. Take it. Oh, it is the sign of Kenyatta. Even now, he prepares to wreak his anger upon you. Listen. Oh, it is true. The volcano erupts. Kenyara shall kill us all. Flee, men of Banyuema. The mighty volcano sends its messengers of death. The lava, it is coming down the mountain. Run! 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 The molten lava sprang from the volcano and rushed down on the village below. Native huts and fences and trees and rocks were swept away in the boiling inferno of fury that leaped forward. And all were killed, save only the godlike creature who ran with the speed of Bara, the deer. Beneath one arm, he held a small, frightened native boy. And when he put him down at last, it was high on the hilltop from which the molten death had flowed. 
Oh, oh, Dago. Oh, Dago. I, I am all right now, Mama Magana. Why you cry? I cry from happiness. You are unhurt, Nagama? The flow went in the direction of the village. But when will this tide of destruction we started stop? Even now it stops. The rumble you hear is not of the volcano. It is thunder. The rain! The blessed rain! Shaken from the sky by Kenyatta's might. The fruits and the grain will grow again. But you, you see, Nagama! So go, so you thousand could bring the rain! We'll return to tell you about the next story of Tarzan in just a moment. In our next story, we relate Tarzan's experience when he forsakes the jungle for the city of Andurmara. Andurmara, hardly a dot on the map of Sudan, but the most important center for the thieves and outlaws and murderers of equatorial Africa in the home of one of the most fascinating and deadly beauties of all times. Our story is called Tarzan and the Siren of Amdurmara. Tarzan, the creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.